everybody. You guys have no clue how cool it is to stand up here and see all of your faces. It's probably, it's probably the, the only easy part about standing up here. So um, we're going to continue in, uh, in Hebrews. And I know I was, I was giving Pastor Jeff a, a hard time last week because he gave me kind of a tough passage to work with. But uh, God, in, in, in the way he would have it, has literally the last couple of weeks just unpacked this in ways that, that I didn't think possible. I didn't think this scripture could be looked at this way. And he had me do something that I've never done before. Um, and I want to challenge all of you guys to try it. You know, because I was, I was unfamiliar with this particular section. It's, it's a section that, that we typically kind of vault over uh, because for the, for the most part, it's the call to be a pastor. So, you know, a lot of times you, you don't see it preached very often. You see people kind of kind of fly right over it. So what I did was every night before I went to bed, I turned off the TV, turned off the music, and I read this passage and then right before I went to bed, I said, God, will you show me your truth in this passage? And it doesn't have to, you know, to, to just be, you know, like, like th this is a whole section. It could be one verse. You know, maybe it's a verse that you're kind of struggling with or a verse that, that you're a little unsure of. Make it be the last thing you read. It's the last thing on your mind before you go to bed. And ask God to show you his truth in it. Because I'm telling you right now, for the last two weeks, he has been incredibly faithful. And if he'll do that for somebody like me, I guarantee he will do it for, for you guys. You know, and it's just, Hebrews is, is such a, it's, it's such a wild book. It's, uh, it's kind of a pastor's go-to. You know, if, if you want to know about the supremacy of God, they're going to they're gonna go, well, let's, let's see what Hebrews has to say. Uh, if you want to know who Jesus is, well, let's go to Hebrews and let's, let's see what this book has to say. And when I started researching the book itself, I, I, under, I understand it. We don't know who the author is. Uh, you know, the theologians have argued for years, you know, is it Paul? Some, uh, some of the words that, that are used in here makes it seem like it's Paul, but then the phraseology is wrong. The phraseology lends itself a little bit more to uh, Barnabas. But the context is wrong. That, that's kind of, that's not really how, how Barnabas was. So maybe it was Apollos. You know, he, you know, he was this, this gifted speaker. Well, maybe it was him. Well, no, the, the context doesn't, doesn't match. So we have no clue, um, you know, who wrote it. You, you will hear people argue, you know, about it. Chad and I had probably, Pastor Chad and I had probably an hour and a half long debate. You know, he, he thinks it's Apollos and, you know, and I'm, I'm sticking to Barnabas. But we, you know, it, it was just one that we had fun with. And then the more I looked into it, you know who the audience is. You know that the audience is followers of the way, uh, which is what they called Christians um, prior, to, uh, prior to their persecution. They were called followers of the way. So you know that it was, that it was written to them and that they were former Jews. But you don't know where they're located. There are arguments for Alexandria, there's arguments for Jerusalem. There's arguments for Rome. But there's always a little piece that says, eh, I don't think so. So again, it's one of those nobody knows what church this was written to. I, I tend to lean a little bit more towards Rome, but there's absolutely 
There's, there's no justification for it because there are things in here that kind of go, yeah, I don't think it was Jerusalem. I don't think it was Rome. I don't think it was Alexandria. I don't think it was Galatia. But I think that's intentional. I think it's intentional because by doing that, it's applicable everywhere. You know, some, you know sometimes you, you kind of have to study the culture to really understand what's being said. But because we don't know the author and we don't know the location of where this was written, it seems to fit everywhere. It fit back then when it was written and it fits here today. You know, and, and two weeks ago when, when Pastor Jeff started this, um, he pretty much said Jesus is the answer. The book of Hebrews starts with Jesus and it ends with Jesus. That first chapter that he talked about started with Jesus and ended with Jesus. Uh, and then in, you know, last week, uh, he talked about the word of God and, uh, and how active it is and, and how sharp it is and how we need to use the word to find our Sabbath rest. You know, to, to, to just to let it cut us wide open and, and expose all of those wounds uh, so that we can be healed. Uh, and in each one of those weeks, he asked a question. In week one, he, he asked, do you know him? Do you really know Jesus? And then last week, I don't know about you, he had me squirming in my seat. Um, he asked, who are we fooling? Who are we fooling when we, when we try and, and say that we know this word, that we understand this word, that we understand the depth of this word. Who are we fooling if we're not in it every day? And I have a question for today. But I want to read the passage first. Now, the words that I'm going to read are going to be a little bit different than what's on the screen. I wanted you guys to have the NIV version, but I want you to hear the CSB version. There, there's, there's small differences um, but let's go ahead and see what chapter 5 has to offer for us. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed in matters pertaining to God for the people to offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since he also is clothed with weakness. Because of this, he must make an offering for his own sins as well as for the people. No one takes this honor on himself. Instead, a person is called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, Christ did not exalt himself to become a high priest, but God who said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. It also says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. During his earthly life, he offered prayers and appeals with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was the son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. After he was perfected, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, and he was declared by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Father, as we, uh, as we take a look, a deeper look at your word, Father, I ask that the word spoken here be your words. Take me out of the equation, Father. Take this human out and put your glory in. And Father, if, if, if I say anything wrong, let it, let it roll off the shoulders of everyone. Let them not hear it. Let them only hear your words and your design for their life. In Jesus' name, amen. So, you know, like, like I said in the beginning, it looks like a call to be a pastor. You know, it, 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 there's, there's, I mean, there's an outline for the type of pastor that you're going to look for. 
you know, and it, it is kind of funny. We're a church in transition looking uh, for that said pastor. But there are some things that are, that are kind of tucked in here that um, they're, ju- they're, just, they're just so cool. And, you know, one of the first things that kind of jumped out at me, he is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and going astray since he is also clothed with weakness. I'm human too. I make mistakes. I make blunders. If if you're looking to the person up here to find your perfection, you're going to be led astray. Because here's my question for you guys. Who's your role model? Who's the one that you're looking up to that you want to emulate? Now, every, you know, you guys are in church. We all know Jesus is the answer, right? But here's my real question. Is that just lip service because you're in, in church? Or is that what you really feel? Is that what shows up in your everyday life? Because that's what this passage is saying. That role model, whoever it is, does their walk match their talk? If you're, if you're gonna if you're gonna say, Oh Lisa, you're my role model. Does my walk match my talk? Do you guys see the times I stumble? The times I, I trip over my own tongue? Cindy's seen a few of them. She's sworn to secrecy, though. So, you know, Crystal has seen a few. Both Crystals, in fact. Chad, Pastor Chad has seen a few. Pastor Jeff, a lot of people have seen them. But if Jesus is your role model then that walk is going to match your talk. What if it's a political figure? There's a lot of that kind of stuff going around right now. You know, we, we've, all, we've, all seen, we've all seen the signs. F this person, F that person. As if, as if that word should ever be spoken out loud. You know, now, now we just put it on signs. We hear a lot of talk about Celebrities. There are some really cool celebrities out there. Maybe it's a singer. I'm a diehard Reba McIntyre fan. Yeah. She's got a new one just came out. She's not my role model. I enjoy her singing. But she's not my role model. Because she's human. She's like this person here. She's like this person here. Whoever fills this space right here is just a human being. So again, is it lip service? Or are you really following Jesus? Is he driving you? Is he driving you into this book? Is he driving you into commentaries and studies and other pastors. Because as much as we want to say that this, is, um, that this is a call to be a pastor, it's applicable to you. It's applicable to everybody. Because again, it's that role model. Who's, who's, that, who's that role model? Who's that person that you follow? Because one of the things um, the verse 4 says... Uh, no one takes this honor on himself. Instead, a person is called by God. You know, uh, during, during the week, I watch a boatload of sermons. I, you know, I just, I kind of, I put YouTube on repeat. And I listen to different theologies, different doctrines. Um, male, female, black, white, Asian, doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. I, I, Basically, I want to get a wide variety so that I understand. You know, it helps me understand uh, the scriptures from 
from multiple angles. Now, not everybody can do that. Uh, but you, you know, but we all have access to, you know, like I said, commentaries and studies and, you know, and things like that. And even, you know, like, let's say you want to stay focused on the Nazarene faith. There are several Nazarene pastors, especially now, that their stuff is online. Uh, you know, there's, there's actually quite a few in the Eastern Michigan district that I listen to all the time. But one thing I've noticed in, uh, in just letting that YouTube play sermons is you'll get some people standing up here that haven't read this book, that haven't studied this book. They're... Um, trying to figure out a nice way to, to say it. They want to bring their opinions. They want to bring their, um, their politics, their, their worldviews, their, all of these things. They want to bring that to here because they want to make that your role model. But that says right there, That person is called by God. So are you called by God? Where are you called by God? What's God calling you to? You know, like I can tell you right now, you know, Cindy and I get to have some, some really cool conversations throughout the week. Uh, Cindy is called to feed people. If you leave this building hungry, she takes that to heart. She thinks that she's failed. Miss Barb, sitting in the back. The beauty that you see out front, that's her vision. That's things that, that she's put together. When we have funerals and things like that, when, when people lose a loved one, she's the first one to jump up and go, let's get them some flowers. Let's take care of them. That's her calling. That's her gift. Miss Pam, Sometimes, you know, sometimes, sometimes we, we kind of have to push back. She's missions. She is missions through and through. It's like every time, every time we talk about we're going we're gonna to preach a series here, she's like, can we throw a missions one in there somewhere? Because that's her heart. That's her passion. That's her calling. What's yours? If you have this role model, you know what that calling is. What is it? Is it to be up here? If it's to be up here, please do the work. I, there, there are so many of you here that I would, abs I would give my eye teeth to hear you preach a sermon because I know that you study. I know that you dive into this. But what's he calling you guys to? What's he calling each of you to? Are you willing to step in to that gifting? You know, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on, I'm, I'm just going to pick on everybody today. I, you know, yeah, you, you guys might want to duck. You know, Ron questioned whether or not he could be the worship director. But God was calling him. And he knew it. Because every time he said something to somebody, they're like, well, God's calling you to that. God's pushing you to that. And guess what? He has had every technical problem known to man thrown at him. And he didn't buckle under the pressure because he was called by God. See, when you jump into something and you're not called by God, there's no net. There, there, there's no net that's going to catch you when you fall. And it's going to hurt when you do. That's the voice of experience speaking. Um, I, I have more scrapes and bruises than, than I care to admit. Because God's called me to a lot of things and you can't tell me any different. But he really didn't. 
What's he calling you to? Sometimes we struggle to know. You know, I mean, even, you know, even Ron did it. How do I know? How do I know I'm being called? How can I be sure that it's Jesus that's my role model and not my own earthly desires? How do I know that? He gives you the outline right here. During his earthly life, they're talking about Jesus here. During his earthly life, he offered prayers and appeals with loud cries and tears. Prayers, you know, some versions say prayers and petitions. This is a man who, with a thought or the snap of his finger, could have made anything happen. But he prayed. You see in there when when he fed the 5,000, he prayed and he gave praises for what wasn't enough. You see times when, he, uh, and even Pastor Crystal talked about this a little bit, when he sent out the 72 and then they came back and they were all, you know, they were all excited, you know, and all that, but they were also tired. He said, Come away, let's talk to my father. He prayed. And in this particular one, in the gar- this particular one is actually referring to the Garden of Gethsemane. The man is literally hours from hanging on a cross, and he prayed. Are you praying? Are you are you praying with loud cries and tears? It's easy, it's easy to pray when things are going good. That's, you're having a great day, come into my office, let's, you know, let's praise God for that. Just a few weeks ago, I watched a mother and father bury their child. They did that service here. And I saw the pain of a mom as she watched them close the lid on that casket for the last time. And you know what she did? She stood right back there and she prayed. I don't know that I could have done that. She prayed. Is that how it is for you guys? Or is it just, oh, hey, thanks God for a great day, check mark. Can you pray and can you praise him when you get that bad result from the doctor? Can you pray and can you praise him when you have to close the lid on a casket? When you have to walk through a storm? Can you do it then? Is it lip service? Or is he really your role model? Although he was the son, he learned obedience in what he suffered. Obedience. Again, snap of a finger or a thought in his head. He could have changed the trajectory of everything, but he didn't. He was obedient to the call that God placed on his life. You know, and again, it's easy to be obedient when all of the technology is functioning correctly and, and when the band hits every note and 
when the pastor, you know, preaches that, that, that happy, happy joy message, that's easy to be obedient in that spot. It's hard to be obedient when your boss tells you you screwed up again. It's hard to be obedient when your car won't start and you have to get to work. You have to get your kids to school. It's hard to be obedient when you're being asked to walk through a storm that nobody should have to walk through. But he did. Our role model did. Because you see, if, if we're following if we're following a politician or a celebrity or a, an athlete or singer, if we're following one of the popular people, look at how their lives turn out. Is that where you want to go? He gives you that choice. Everywhere in here, you have a choice. So is it lip service? Or is Jesus your role model? Because here's the deal. Here's the whole point of verse 5. When he cried out with loud cries and tears... Who is he crying to? The one who is able. The one who is able to save him from everything. There is one, one, not 10, not 20, not 50. There's one who's able to be with us in that storm to walk with us in that storm, to strengthen us through that storm, to meet us on the front end and to meet us on the back end. There's one. Is he your role model? He's the only one who's able. You know, Pastor Jeff talked about, you know, some of the the other religions that have four or 500 gods Where are those gods now? Where's Jesus? He's in this room right now because the Holy Spirit is in each and every one of you. If Jesus is your role model, then the Holy Spirit is living inside you and he's guiding. He's guiding every move you make. Um, there's a passage in here that that says walk in the spirit there's a reason that it says walk in the spirit because stop and think about it if I'm walking I can't walk in two directions I can only walk in one direction doesn't matter which direction I walk but I can only walk in one so if I'm walking in the spirit there's only one way for me to walk And that's with Jesus as my role model, the one who is able. The one who is able to, as verse 9 says, be perfected, to be the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Eternal salvation, temporary glory. Think about your idols. And, and those, those other role models. Think about those for, for just a second. See, we have a tendency when we really like somebody. Like I said, I, I absolutely love Reba McIntyre. Okay, she's been divorced twice. She's, she's a Christian woman. 
She's made a boatload of mistakes. She's had battles with alcohol and things like that. And if she was my role model, I would change scripture to make her more suitable, to make her more correct. We have a tendency to do that. You know, when, when, we, when, we, really, when we really like somebody or we really, we really just think they're the bomb, they're the way, they're the person I want to follow, we will alter scripture to make, to make it okay to follow them. And most of the time, we don't even realize we've done it. And the reason that that happens is because we're not in this book. I'm not trying to guilt you into reading this. I'm just trying to tell you we have one role model. He's the only one worthy of following. If you're following me, stop. Because I'm guaranteed to lead you astray. I'm not going to do it intentionally. I'm not going to do it on purpose. But if you're following me, that's a mistake. If you're following the person who, who winds up standing up here, you're going to be led astray. Get in this book. In this book. Read it. Study it. You have a question? Ask it. But get in it. Truth is found here. A way of life is found here. But more than anything, love is found here. And it's the only place you're going to find it. Lip service. Truly following God. You choose. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. Father, thank you so much for everything that you do in our lives. Father, as hard as it is, we thank you in the storms. We praise you in the storms. Right now, this church is in a storm. You know, from equipment problems to building problems to searching for a pastor. But Father, there's one thing, there's one thing that's for certain. And that thing is that you're here. And Father, we thank you and we praise you that you're walking with us through this and that you're gonna see us through to the other side, stronger, better, and closer to you as a result. Father, as everybody heads out today, give them a heart, give them a desire, and give them a passion to dig into your word um, and to hear your truths for their lives. Because, Father, again, you are the only one. You are the author and the perfecter of our faith. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. You have a great, great Sunday.